Welcome to your Fluix tutorial on capturing signatures via email. Your administrator has already configured the workflow for you, so our focus today is primarily on using this feature in a real-life setting. Start working on the form as usual, for example, by opening a blank template for briefcase. Once you finish completing the fields and tap the Submit button, there will be several options to choose from, including Route to Client or similar. You can allow the signer to edit any field or add a signature only. Enter the recipient's address, the number of days the request will be valid, and a small message to accompany your request. Sent. The document is being sent. It stays in outgoing for a few seconds and ends up in sent for signature once fully dispatched. You can track the signing progress here or revoke the request at any time. Retracted documents are moved to inbox and you can continue working on them. Just open the form, edit field data, and resend the document if needed. Please remember that only documents with a valid digital signature field can be sent for signing. Otherwise, Fluix won't email them for you. Only one recipient can be added per document. If you know that it might take longer for him to sign it, extend the link expiration period at will. It is recommended to write a meaningful message in the email box. This message appears in the body of the notification email and might influence the decision to open it. With Fluix, you can save time and money on commuting, as well as the headache of sending documents back and forth. You can capture signatures via email from your current customers, service providers, or any other third-party users. For them, no Fluix account is required. Let's change hats and continue from the signer's perspective. The signer is notified via email with all the details about the sender and when the document needs to be signed. The Open and Sign button opens a secure page in their default browser. The great thing is, anyone with an email and a web browser can officially sign documents in Fluix. This means that it can be done on any device, on the go, or in the office. The form you send is displayed in full. The signer can view or edit it according to the selected permission mode. There are several ways for the signer to respond to a signature request, either by completing or declining it. If everything is OK with the document, the signer can just jump to a signature field with an arrow pointer. To sign, just click on the field and enter your name with the keyboard. The signer can also enclose a short comment or leave it blank and finally submit the form back to you. The signer has finished his work. After being signed, the document is automatically returned back to the Fluix application and continues its way through the workflow. The signer also gets an email notification with a copy in flattened format. It is provided for reference purposes only, so the signer can see the final state of the signed document. The form fields can be reviewed, but not edited. The actual signed document travels directly to the next person who will work on it, you in this case. A signed version of the document is returned to Fluix and triggers a push notification in your mobile app. It immediately appears in your inbox marked as Sign. A message from the signer is displayed on top and you can decide to act accordingly. Changing any field value invalidates the signature and makes it necessary to collect it again to seal the form contents. It is still possible to sign the document in person with Fluix. However, when the signer is not available on site, capturing a signature via email is much more efficient than driving over. Either method can be used at your discretion, depending on particular circumstances. When the document with the signature is ready, choose Submit to Office or a similar option to send it to the next workflow participant. If you have any questions about this tutorial, please contact your Fluix administrator for further instructions. Thank you for watching and enjoy Fluix!